Hi there, and welcome back to The Fuse Show. Today, I am uh, joined by our guest, David Stange. He is the co-founder and CEO of Beachy, a uh, vacation uh, vacation management software. Thanks for joining us on the show. Yeah, man. Glad to be here, David. Thanks for, thanks for the invitation. So vacation management software is something I've never actually ever thought about. Can you walk me through the story of how this idea came to you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we actually have a great founding story um, and, and certainly unique to our business. And it all started It all started a long time ago when I was 14 years old. And it was the summer after my eighth grade year of, of, uh, of school. And my parents told me I couldn't be a, a bum and lay on the couch all summer. So I decided to, instead of laying on the couch, I'd go hang out on the beach all summer. And I got a job working at a big resort in the Florida Panhandle Um you know, doing beach chair operations. So setting up chairs for people that, that came down on vacation, it's a big operation. They put out like 1800 chairs a day. So a bunch of college kids. And then me, you know, scrawny 14 year old kid, I think I weighed like 110 pounds uh, when, when we started. <laughs> and uh, so I did that every summer. until I graduated from college all the way until I was 22 years old. I, I just came back and that's what we did. And, and, but hmm. everything changed for me um, when on my first vacation as a dad. And like, David, I don't know if you're a dad, but like vacationing as a parent is just a totally different experience. And, <laughs> and when you put sand and water and like all these things that can kill children, like all around you, it just, it <laughs> just really changes the game. So um, my daughter was, How old are you there, my daughter now is six years old and I have a little boy who's two. Okay. And, okay. and we, uh, so it was our first, my first beach, beach vacation as a dad and like, we're going back to my hometown, like my beach where I grew up. And like, I'm so excited because I'm taking my little girl and like, I wake up early and I go down to the beach and like, I'm standing in line waiting to talk to some kid about what chairs I could sit in and what chairs I couldn't sit in. And I'm like, this was a really bad guest experience. This is my first day. And like, I'm, and if anyone knew how all of it worked, it was me because I'd done it for almost a decade. And I was standing in line and I remember having this thought in my head, why can't I book my beach chairs? The same way I book my airline seat, the same time I make my hotel reservation. And, you know, six years later, here we are. I think we've done a really good job putting that product in the market. And now, um, you know, we've extended into several other offerings within the hotel and, and resort space. Um, like I've got a team right now, you know, the name of our company is Beachy. And I have a team in Kohler, Wisconsin, um, you know, rolling out, hmm. um, rolling out our software at golf courses in Wisconsin. I was at Lambeau Field last weekend rolling out our software, you know, at Lambeau. Uh, so we're, you know, we're, we've certainly gone, gone much further than the beach now, but that was, that was how, how we got our start. So once you have the idea, how do you, how do you like build it and how do you like find your initial customers? Yeah, I, I'm not a technologist, right? I mean, I, I don't know what, a, I don't know what the code looks like. I mean, it, to me, it looks like the matrix, um, uh, when, when <laughs> it just, it doesn't make, you know, it might as well be Japanese. Uh, I can't. <laughs> and, uh. And you know, so it all started out. I just started asking around in Nashville, where I was living at the time. Like, I want, I need, I want some people to bounce this idea off of, but someone who can actually like put the put the wheels in motion and, and start writing code. Um, and uh, and I I stumbled across this guy. His name is Josh Aronson. Uh, and and Josh and I met at a Nashville hot chicken restaurant. And within one hour of meeting each other, we started a company together. Uh, and okay. and like literally. He's telling me his experience of he has four kids and like going down to the beach and and like, it, you know, it was like we had this same story and it was it was just it was kind of this meant to be um, it, it just it was just meant to be. And and, you know, growing up on the beach, I kind of had an idea of who our first customers were going to be and our MVP, hmm. you know, it took it you know, took a took a minute to get it into the market. But once we got our MVP out, we started signing customers pretty quickly and certainly just continued to iterate and and build on that. And, you know, we're now on hundreds of destiny resort destinations all over the, all over the U S and, and, you know, in the Caribbean. Are there incumbents in this space or is this a relatively novel solution? Cause I've, I've never heard of a th thing like this before. Yeah. I mean, when we started, we were the only ones doing it. Um, there's, there's hmm. been other people who have tried. Um, one of my favorite stories to tell is, is three years ago, I was in the room um, with a pretty big municipality and and I we talked about our product and then we told them how much it was going to cost. And their director of IT stood up and goes, "That's ridiculous for that amount of money. I'll build this thing myself." And hmm. and I was like, kind of dumbfounded. And they kind of kicked us out. They were like, "Okay, well, then we're just going to do 
quit internally. And uh, okay. three years later, it happened about a month ago, we get the call from the same, from, from, from the parks and rec director and said, hey, would you mind coming back? And we sat down in the room and our price was six times higher this time than it was three years ago. And we, they signed the deal. Uh, yeah. So, huh. so people have, have tried to copy it or tried to, tried to, you know, do what we're doing. Um, fortunately we, we have some pretty strong patents, um, which in the software world, you know, may mean one thing or another, but, um, we've actually had some pretty, some pretty, um, some pretty big companies that are reaching out to us because of our patent. Like they're finding us because they're hmm. doing patent searches and finding our patents and then reaching out to gotcha. us about, about our software. So. That is an interesting lead generation. Method. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's only happened a couple of times so far, but certainly, okay. you know, would love for it to keep happening. Six times is quite the amount. Yeah. That's uh, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were, I mean, it, it, what was really funny was they were like, let's pick up the conversation where we left off three years ago. So your price is this. And I was like, hold on, stop. No, our price isn't that. Our price is, <laughs> our price is this. And, and the guy like just, you know, was like, oh my gosh. Um, but um, yeah, we got the deal done and, and we're really excited hmm. about, some, you know, a, so it's a great deal for us. And, and, and um, you know, we, we launched, we launched there, uh, you know, I don't know, sometime in the next few months. So do you feel like launching a novel and innovative solution for this niche makes it easier for sales? Or do you think it makes it harder for sales on average? Um, or do you feel like there's no relationship? No, I mean, I, I definitely think it makes it harder. Right. I mean, like we're, we're okay. first to market with the product that's historically yeah. been run on pencil and paper by 16 year old kids who may or may not have, you know, ingested something before work or the, in the morning right? <laughs> or, or, or may disappear after lunch for a couple hours. Right. I mean, and and, you know, and it's funny because I think that people always say, like, what you guys do is simple. Right. I mean, you guys rent chairs on the beach. You know, like that that was the first product that we that we made, you know, like you're renting chairs like how hard can it be and then you start getting into all the little nuancey things that our product does that are made specifically for beach boys and you know cabana attendants and it's kind of like i think one of the biggest compliments we get was obviously this was built by guys who worked on the beach for a long time um yeah. but like taking taking like someone who's been doing it for a long time and like taking that clipboard out of their hand and replacing it with an ipad is i mean like it's just a foreign thing and and you know, so that, that certainly has taken, taken time to get them over that. And, and, you know, I think that the biggest, one of the biggest validation points that we have is we now have hotels and owners of third party beach vendor companies that come to us and, and, and say, Hey, I, you know, we need your product because we're having a hard time hiring. Um, the hotels mm -hmm. next door use your software and, you know, those guys are making so much more money in tips that they're, that they're going to work there instead of working for us. And so we, we need, we mm -hmm. need your product and that that's happening. Uh, more and more these days. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, how do you, how do you first, how do you, for, like, how's, do you, do you know personally your first customer or was that more of a, like, you had to like break in the industry as an outsider? Um, I didn't know our first customer. Um, okay. um, they're a really great customer. Um, it's a really great company called Lazy Days Beach Service out of Pensacola, Florida. They were our very first customer. And, and I was literally just a cold call. And, and hmm. I talked to the, got the owner of the business on the phone and just started talking about what we were doing an hour later, an hour later, I'm sitting in his office with his partner and, and I'm like, we don't have a product yet, <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we're thinking about. And they're like, if you do that, we're your customer, you know, like, and, hmm. and they, and, and they've been our customer now since day one and they are, um, I mean, they're, they're a great customer. They're a great run company. And, and you know, I tell them you know, we had a conversation not too long ago and I just, um, you know, we wouldn't be where we are without them. You know, they, they had a lot of right. impact and a lot of say on, on, on our product and the way it was built. And, you know, a lot of like, a lot of the things that I wanted to do weren't necessarily maybe the things that they were thinking about. And so uh, they really helped kind of guide, guide the product and make sure that it was exactly what, what they needed. And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully they see this and, you know, they're going to, it's a, uh, they're going to be a customer for life. Do you remember what the pitch was when you're doing that cold, cold call? Oh, uh, probably just a bunch of lies at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, software sales is, is a different type of sell in that um, yeah. we were selling vaporware. We didn't have a product. 
right? We were just selling them the idea and that we were, you know, going to be well-funded enough to go build them something that was going to be useful to them. Um, and, you know, I remember at the time, you know, it was like, we're going to, you know, we're going to do, I, I mean, I can tell you like some of the things I thought that we would do that, that just turned out like, weren't, but it was like, I want to do, um, I want to do like on-demand seating for, for chairs on the beach. And like, I want, as like you sell your first chair, I want the price to go up. You sell your second chair, I want, you know, so like everyone's paying different <laughs> prices for chairs. And like, I yeah. thought that was like the greatest idea ever. I mean, Uber obviously is who, who, you know, came up with that model. It wasn't anything that was, you know, that I came up with, but I'm like, that's going to be the model is, you know, chairs started $40. The longer you wait to book them, you know, they may be a hundred dollars by the time you can. And, and they yeah. were like, yeah, no, we're not going to manage to that. Like, that's not, that's just not something we're, we're going to do. And it turns out no one wants to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was great. It was good feedback from them. Um, that, that and we haven't, Feedback's we haven't, good. yeah, and we haven't, we yeah. haven't, you know, we, we actually have built that, um, product. We have that as an option for our customers and we don't have, a, I think we might have one customer who actually utilizes that feature. So. <laughs> Do you know how many, uh, resorts or beaches or crews you had to talk to, to get a full picture of what you feel like was a sufficient amount of information for an MVP? Um, uh, yeah, so we I picked a yeah. different uh, picked beach service, like in uh, different geographies, because beach services run yeah. different in Miami than it is in Naples, than it is in gotcha. South Carolina, than it is in Texas, than it is in the Florida Panhandle. So I went on a I went on a on a quite the journey. Um, I've walked from Miami Beach to Deerfield Beach. I've walked from um, from like Alabama beaches to Panama City beaches. I've walked. I mean, like we've just done a lot of walking. And you wouldn't know it if you look at me, but we've done a lot of, you know, a lot of beach walking and just talking to different people working on the beach, talking to different beach attendants, talking to owners of different beach services, mm. hoteliers, you know, just the likes. And, and, you know, we did all that as we were, you know, not, it's not like we, we did all that. And then we started building when I mean, we started building and then just continue to iterate and, and, you know, make our product better. But um, it's certainly been quite the journey, especially when we, you know, started talking to big brands and, and what the big brands want versus what, you know, a third party vendor who has a contract for the hotel wants. So once you had the MVP built, did you go like resort by resort, like physically to see if they'd be interested in purchasing your software? Or did you do a bunch of like pre-screening through emails and phone calls? What was your strategy? It was, I mean, boots on the ground. Like we're just talking to everybody trying to get as much, you know, land grab as we can. Um, you know, the strategy certainly changed over time and now it's, um, you know, we are in the brands and, and the brands are rolling us out to, you know, significant portions of their portfolio, which is, hmm. you know, so instead of rolling out one hotel at a time, you know, we're, we have a rollout now that's 85 hotels uh, and, hmm. you know, doing 85 hotels, which is, that's where we want to be, right? I mean, I want, I want to be doing 8,500 hotels, but we'll, you know, we've gone from doing one at a time to now 85 hotels. And I think our biggest launch that we'll have for the 2022 season is we're going to roll out a hundred new locations on March first for a for a new company for a new brand. Hmm. Does it normally take a long time to launch, or is it they just want to give a lot of like preparation time and training? <clears throat> yeah, time? it's a, it's a northern or like more northern location, so they're just they're clo they they close November, December, January, February. Um, their their beach I services. See. It's just I mean you're not going to sit out on the beach when it's forty five degrees outside. So they they so they launch they they start putting chairs out again on the beach March first. Um, so we we decided okay. to gotcha. wait until next year. Hmm. When when you have these engagements with the clients, um, are you the one that handles all the communications? Do you have like a large sales? No, I I, I wish. Sometimes I wish that I was still doing all of that. Um, okay. You know, fortunately, our team has has grown. Um, we're almost thirty people now. Um, um, we're finishing up our Series A funding right now, and with that, um, I think by the end of quarter one next year, we're at sixty people. And that's what we're hmm. going to need to just to, you know, continue to, I mean, we're knocking down big deal after big deal right now. And I'm looking around. I mean, I went to Lambo to roll out our software in Wisconsin because there was no one else that could do it. And it was the first, Im food, first implementation that um, for our food and beverage product that I had ever done. And, you know, telling the hotel general manager um, that like, I'm this is the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> it was, Probably not, um, you know, probably wasn't what they wanted to hear, but, um, but then I, she, she asked me, she goes, so what, so what do you do at Beachy? I said, I'm actually Beachy's CEO. And she goes, oh, 
okay, why you're here? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, I was the only one that could do it. And, and that's just the huh. mentality that we have at Beachy is, I mean, like, you know, everyone hmm. was wearing multiple hats and we all need to be able to help each other out. And, and I have implementation teams that have been on the road now for four or five consecutive weeks. And that's not healthy for anybody's work-life balance and, and their family. So. What do you personally miss about being on the ground and having sales interactions with people? Uh, I mean, I miss the relationships I have with like some, like, like, you know, I've got really great relationships with a lot of our customers and now I have a lot of our customers I've never met, never talked to. Oh, uh, and, okay. and, and, and I just, you know, I want to, I want to have that personal touch, um, with our customers. I, I just don't have mm-hmm. it anymore. And, and, and that's just a part of growth. And, and like, you know, certain people on our team have those relationships now. And, but I certainly, you know, it, um, you know, growing a business, yeah, having an idea and then turning that idea into a business and then growing that business into now a company that's worth, you know, uh, you know, I would, I would consider a lot of money. Um, there are very few people in the world that get to do that. And, and like, I'm, right. I'm man, like I wake up every day excited to go to work. Right. I mean, like this is, this is a dream come true. And, and, and like being able to like, share that with our customers and like share in that with our customers, right? Like we're fulfilling a, a need of, of this mm-hmm. software that they've needed for a long time. And, and, and like, like I'll give you a, two years ago, I got a call on a Sunday morning from a girl that uses our software and she always calls on Sundays and, and, and she calls me and she's crying, which isn't abnormal. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, what's wrong. And she said, David, I just wanted to say, thank you. And I, and I was hmm. like, thank you, what? And she goes, you know, she said, I've made $29,000 in tips this year because of Beachy. Whoa. And last year, I didn't make $29,000. I'm getting married. Hmm. And all the tips that I made this year with Beachy are paying for my wedding. And like, and, hmm. and, and like, I mean, like I was, so now I'm crying. She's crying. I'm crying. You know, it's this whole, it was this whole moment. But. Um, yeah, I miss like, I don't get those phone calls because I don't, I'm not on the ground anymore. You know, I don't have these conversations mm-hmm. or the, you know, I'm not, I'm not meeting the beach attendants. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky if I get to meet the ownership group of the, of the contract we just signed. So that's, that's what I miss. Do you ever, um, or I guess you have to at some point, <laughs> how often do you visit the resorts that news beach? You just, uh, like just to get to know the people and further the relationships and just also enjoy the beach. I mean, I enjoy the beach every week cause I live on the beach. Uh, you know, we, every Sunday is, is typically our, as our family day, we go to the beach, we have dinner on the beach. Um, you know, that's, that's hmm. kind of, you know, we try to do that every Sunday. Um, Mike and Ahosa and, and Tanner Sheehan, who are two executives at beachy that I would consider very close friends. You know, we, we kind of like our families get together on Sundays and that's kind of that's we go to the beach. But um, I try to do a roadshow once a year where I go see all of our customers um, and I try to just knock it, you know, like do a preseason meeting or a postseason meeting. Um, that um, hasn't happened uh, in 2021 yet. Um, right. I don't think that it will this year with with everything that we have going on. Um, but, yeah. you know. I'll starting 2022, you know, I need, I'm going to schedule a couple of weeks where we're, you know, we're hitting the road and we're just going to go see as many customers as we can. So it's typically once a year now that we try to do that. And, and, but like our executive team um, has to go see customers once a quarter. So someone from our executive mm-hmm. team is, is going in person to see um, every single one of our customers, um, you know, once a quarter. Hmm. And has that been a tradition from since the origin of the company? I mean, the origin was I was the guy that always went to see them, yes. you know, and then, and then 2019 and in the 2020, you know, I went and I brought someone with me and then now it's like that person, like kind of like it was a handoff from me to someone gotcha. else on the executive team. And now they, like, they kind of handle the account. And I, and I still have a few that I handle myself just from like, you know, from a touch point, you know, and sending Christmas gifts and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, but uh, most most of them, you know, um, I don't have a direct line of communication to anymore. Do you have a ballpark of how much airline miles you've accumulated from all that travel? Um, it's, it's significant. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very. I was on 160 flights last year, uh, oh, um, and, like okay. in the height of COVID. 160 flights. Um, um, for the first few years of the business, I was averaging being away from home uh, around 20 days a month. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, like my family sacrificed a lot for this business. You know, I mean, I've got a six year old, a two year old, um, <laughs> a very understanding wife, um, you know, who, who, who understands. That's so key. Oh dude, it's everything. Right. I mean, like she's, I mean, it, you know, and it hasn't always been easy, you know, I mean, like, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and lie to the audience and, and, and say that it's been easy. I mean, it's been, it's been a struggle for all of us, but I think that now we're, we're on the right side of things. And, and my travel this year is, you know, <clears throat> like I tell our team, um, don't ask me to go somewhere. If you want me to be there, um, ask, ask hmm. me to go if I need to be there. And there's a big differentiation okay. between me needing to be somewhere and you wanting me to yeah. be somewhere. And me wanting to be right. somewhere. And I tell them if if, right. if I'm scheduled to be on a trip and you don't think I need to be there, then tell me I don't need to be there. And I won't go. Right. Uh, I want to do the things that beat you that no one else can do. I don't want to, you know, and, and we've hired, man, like our, I'm, I'm so proud of the team that we have and, and the people that we've like been able to attract. Uh, I mean, it's probably one of the proudest things that I, you know, of, of all the things hmm. we've done. I mean, you know, convincing people to leave careers, um, you know, Tim, Tim Hansen, who runs sales for us, he, he left, he left the company after almost a decade, um, of running sales. Uh, Mike, our VP of product was at the same company for 22 years and left to come work at a startup, you know, uh, uh-huh. um, you know, Tanner Sheehan, who was Beachy's first employee still here, you know, um, five, five years later, uh, you know, we, Piotr was our first engineer still here five years later. I mean, it's like, you know, we've, we've done a really good job of, of, of hiring, and bringing on hmm. people that just have a tremendous amount of experience and, and creating a culture and environment where people don't want to leave. And I think that that is, that's one of the hardest things that any company can do. And, you know, we're not Amazon or Google or Oracle or, you know, Facebook or whatever that have trillions of dollars or maybe not trillions, but certainly billions of dollars <laughs> in, in cash in the, in the bank. And, you know, we're, you know, we're paying middle, middle of the pay range uh, but, but, but we can't compete on, on some of the other stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, like I hear, you know, um, you know, employees giving one year paid, um, maternity and paternity leave, um, which isn't, I mean, that's amazing that companies can offer that. Like, I, uh, that's incredible. I, we can't do that. You know I mean? Like we just, I mean, like right. we just can't, I mean, like, every person is so valuable to lose somebody for a year is, I mean, like that is just not possible. Um, and, and, you know, but being able to attract people regardless of that and some of the things that, that we've done, I mean, I think that aren't, none of them are unique or novel just to be cheap, but we have an unlimited vacation policy. Uh, I don't think that's unique in tech, but what I tell, um, what I tell my team is you have to take at least two weeks a year. Um, and that's without a computer. So five or two weeks a year without a computer and five days have to be consecutive days off. Uh, and hmm. so it's not, you know, like, so you have to like, and, and like, I'm not monitoring them. Like, I mean, like, you know, like, right, like right, if they right. do that or not, but that's like what I tell them. And I, and we don't have a single person that works for Beachy that makes less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and, and, and so what I, I tell all of them, like, if, if I have to monitor your vacation calendar, um, I'm paying you a hundred thousand dollars a year or, or sometimes more than that, whatever the number is. Like if I, like you're an adult who makes a six figure salary, if I'm mon- monitoring your vacation p- calendar, then like, this just isn't the right fit for you. Um, <laughs> you know, like, that's just not the way we're going to operate. And, and same thing with like our expense accounts and stuff. I mean, like, ev- you know, like everyone has a company card that, that needs one and, and they have to fill out an ex- expense report and like document all these things. But it's like, if I'm, if I'm asking like, all right, you, you, you went to dinner and it was $300 on, on Tuesday night. Like I want a list of every single person that was there. I want another job title. I'm going to like, you know, like, <laughs> like, that's just like, we're not the right fit for you. And so we're right. beachy. We're it's it, what we do should be fun. Um, mm. you know, we, we get together every year, we bring the whole team together and we do a beach vacation together as a team. Mm. We, you know, we call it beachy summit and like, and you know, cause now our team is really is fully distributed. We have, we don't have an office. Um, our executive team mm. all lives in the same city for the most part. Um, but, but like all of our engineers, operations, sales are spread out all over the place. And it's weird, man. I have, I don't know, 10 or 15 employees now I've never met, never shaken their hand, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like never looked them eye to eye. And that is, that, that's huh. really strange. Right. I mean, and, and like going to this fully remote environment where I'm, you know, leading, leading calls, right. Like an all hands call and like, and I'm sharing my screen. So like, I can't even see the reaction that I'm getting. And I'm like, you know, beach is the best. And then like, but I have no, like, 
you know, there's, I get no feedback um, from them. So, you know, we did things like everyone has to have their cameras on, on every call, like, you know, um, you know, anyway, so it's just been a, certainly been, been a weird, uh, COVID's been a weird thing for us, um, you know, um, just in terms of going fully remote, fully distributed team, and then growing the mm. team. And, you know, um, you know, 160 flights last year was certainly not something I want to do again. So on top of unlimited vacation policies, what else do you feel like you've done as a leader that makes your company really attractive for the people to either leave long-standing careers or just stay a long time at Beachy? I mean, I think it. I think it just comes down to uh, I, this is this is my this is my philosophy on management in general. Um, I was fortunate enough to to meet a guy. I don't even remember his name, but he was one of the first people that Nissan North America hired. Um, he was like uh, in the United States and they were moved from California and they moved to Nashville and he was their chief human resources officer. And, and he said Nissan was spending like, I forget the number, but let's call it a million dollars a year surveying their employees on what they thought about Nissan and their career at Nissan. And he's like, this is ridiculous. Like uh, our new employment question questionnaire is one question. What do you think about your boss? Because people who like their boss mm -hmm. like their job and people like, you know, people don't leave, the people don't leave jobs, they leave bosses. And I, I, I really believe okay. that. And, and our executive team, you know, it, I, you know, not that we don't have to have hard conversations with people. Right. I mean, like it, at the end of the day, I mean, we're a company, you know, that's trying to yeah. do something no one else has ever done before. They're, every day isn't fun, but you know, um, we don't hire assholes, uh, uh, you know, and it's, and, and it's, and it's, I just think that it's a collaborative team environment, um, you know, from, from product and engineering, you know, sales and operations. Um, yeah, I think that we've just done a really good job of matching up personalities and, and keeping mm -hmm. it light and keeping it fun. And, you know, like we're a team that's allowed to say fuck a lot, um, which, which, which happens quite often, you know, in, in the startup environment, I think. Um, but, you know, um, especially now being, being fully remote and, and, and having a distributed team, I mean, it's different than it was when we were all in an office together, mm. but, um, you know, giving people flexibility of when they work. Um, we don't have any meetings that start before 10. We don't have any meetings that end after three. So everyone's expected to be online and be available for meetings between 10 yeah. and three. But I don't care if you start work at six in the morning. I don't care if you don't work. You know, you, I want you to I want, I'd like you online between the hours and 10 and three. But if you're just available to be on Slack or prod support or whatever, like, great. You can work from midnight until seven in the morning. I don't, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, like whatever is going to work best for you. So that's how we think about it. I like it. Yeah, you looking you looking so for a job, David? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm trying to. One of the reasons I host this show is I just want to learn from other entrepreneurs, like how to be a good leader. And I think that's I just want to like just absorb all the principles I can from all the different guests that I have because I just want to be a good leader in my future. And uh, I mean, I think it's, I'm not actively looking for a job, <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiment. I mean, I, I just think it comes down to treating people with respect. Right. I mean, like yeah. and, and treating people how you how you would want to be treated. I, I mean, I know that's like right. That's so cliche to say that. But like, I don't you know, like I don't um, you know, like I don't yell at people. I don't slam doors or, you know, I mean, like it's just like we have to have our conversation like we screwed up. Like, let's let's fix that. Right. And let, let's figure out how we're not mm -hmm. going to do that again. And it's. And it's almost like being a, you know, it's like being a coach and not, and not being, you know, a it's not, a, it's, it, I mean, and not that it, it is when we don't have a dictatorship, right? I mean, we don't have a democracy either, but, but, <laughs> but we don't have a dictatorship, you know, like I, I'm, right. I'm wrong all the time. And, and I tell my team um, when I'm wrong, like, don't, I, don't call me out like in an all hands meeting, like, and tell me that I'm wrong. Uh, I, I, I mean, you can, but I would appreciate it if you don't. Like, call me after the meeting and just say, "Hey, man, like, I think that I think that that's the wrong strategy, or I think that's the wrong way to think about this, or have you thought about thinking about it this way?" Because I've been thinking, you know, and, right. like, and let's have that dialogue. And and man, right. I can't tell you how many times my mind has been changed by, um, what I mean, someone that that's a junior engineer or someone that's our CTO, hmm. uh, just like. Um, because I don't have all the answers, right? And no one, no one's ever done right. what we're doing before. And, and so I can't expect to get it right 100% of the time. Um, but I, I will say when, when you know, because I've had to do this too, when your entire team is telling you that you're doing something, that you're going in something the wrong way, and you firmly believe that you're doing it the right way, you better be right. Um, yeah. if you're, <laughs> because, because if you're wrong, you're, you're going to lose your whole team. And, 
and we've mm. we've had that too. And I and I'm and I was right. Mm. I mean, you know, knock on wood. So far, um, I was right. So uh, we've thus far talked about the journey from origination to where your company is mm -hmm. today. Where do you see your company going in the future, or in the, just the whole domain of vacation software as a whole? Well, I think that um, you know we started out with the product of rent beach chairs, pool chairs. You know, just I mean, we do surf lessons and mermaid lessons and jet ski rentals, pontoon boat. Rentals. Wait, what's a mermaid uh, lesson? I, your your guess is as good as mine, but apparently, uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> from my understanding of it, this is a real thing. And and okay. there are there are mermaids that do mermaid classes and like little girls, um, and I don't even think it's little girls. I think it can be like moms too. I don't I don't know. Um, but they like rent a tail, and then they like Whoa. learn to swim like mermaids. Um, I've never heard yeah. of that. That's yeah, neat. You, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we we. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so we you know we did you know we do all that really well, and then but what we realized super early on was we now know like the physical uh, what our mapping technology does and what we've patented is we now know the physical address for all of these beach chairs and pool chairs. We know where they're going to be day after day. And, and by knowing someone's name and having their payment information who rented the equipment, but now knowing exactly where they are based off the mapping technology that we created right. is really valuable. And, and, you know, so for like the past two years, we've integrated into nine different hotel point of sale systems um, to create a better guest experience with people that are ordering foods. So now a cocktail server, you know, instead of coming up to you and going, hi, sir, you know, like, would you like a drink? And then, well, what room number are you in? It's, you know, it's, hey, David, how you doing? You know, I see it's your first day here at the Ritz Carlton in Naples. Like, hope you're enjoying mm -hmm. the hotel. Um, and uh, can I get you something to drink? Right. And then the next iteration of where we're seeing next, we're collecting all this data is we now know like that David Tran is back at vacation, back on vacation at the Ritz Carlton in Naples. We know he's on a business trip or he's on a leisure trip. We know he's with his wife or he's with his kids. Um, or, you know, um, and we know based off all those things, what like chances are what you're going to order. Uh, so now instead of your hmm. cocktail server coming over and going, hi, sir, um, you know, and, and that's today, or that was, that was, that was last year. Now she's coming up to you going, Hey David. Right. And the next, the next iteration is I want her to show up with a Bud Light and a strawberry daiquiri because she knows you're going to order one or the other. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's the future, right? I mean, our golf product hmm. is, is very similar. And so, um, we're now a 5G mobile tablet point of sale system that works on beverage carts. And like in the last month, we rolled out Pinehurst and we have a team at Kohler right now rolling out all the uh, golf courses for the Ryder Cup. So that product is, hmm. is, is, is being really well um, received in the market. But, you know, our next step is, you know, we started integrating with all the tea time software uh, companies that are out there. And now we can associate your tea time when you check in now your credit card number. Right. And then the and then the starter, when you go to tee off on the first tee, assigns that to a cart number. So when the cart girl comes around and says cart one, two, three, she goes, oh, hey, David, how you doing? Right. And it's like a country club mm -hmm. experience. But every but right, at every right. but at every public golf course in the country. And I think that personalization is going to be is everything. So right. True. I mean, like yeah. knowing people's name, curating the ultimate guest experience, you know, Airbnb did this, you know, did this exercise you may be familiar with, like what's a one-star experience, a two-star guest experience. And they went all the way up to like an 11 star guest experience. And I think the 11 star guest experience was Elon Musk picks you up at the, like off of a SpaceX rocket and like, you know, <laughs> like a, a marching band lining the street as you're getting driven to your Airbnb and the Tesla Roadster, you know, it's like just this like crazy <laughs> thing. Right. And, and, and we, you know, we have those types of conversations, like what's a five-star experience look like as a beachy customer and, and what could an 11 star experience look like and, and just mm. let our entire team dream. And, and like we all split up in teams and, and did it together. And it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to yeah, think about, fun, about, you know, what the, what the future of technology, um, can be. Right. I mean, like it's, um, it's changing really fast and, but, but I think at the end of the day, it's creating the best guest experience possible for the guest and delivering on an experience that they didn't think was possible. One of my, amongst my favorite days of my life are just the brainstorming days I've had either in school or in companies where we're just given like full liberty to pursue whatever we think is like in the best interest of our target demographic, in this case, like beach mm -hmm. resorts, and just given like full liberty to like brainstorm what is infinite money, infinite resource, right. infinite time, right. what would you right. do? And I just feel like those are just fun exercises. Yeah, no, absolutely. And sometimes, sometimes the answers are impractical, <laughs> but sometimes they give insights like, hey, we can't get 
a hundred percent of the way there because right. it's going to cost a billion dollars, but getting 30% of the way there for 1% of the cost is a good trade off. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like my, my dad's a hotelier, right? I, my, I grew up with a dad who's in the hotel business like my entire life. And, and when I was in high school, um, my high school girlfriend asked me like, what does your dad do? Like, what, like, what, like, what does he do? And, and her parents were both in healthcare. And she said, you know, my parents save lives. Like they, they literally save people's lives. Like, what would you say that your dad does? And I was like, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, that's a little question. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I remember asking my dad, like, dad, well, like if someone asked you that question, like, what would you say you do? And he goes, and he goes, look around, see all these people that are smiling and having a good time. Like we were a part of putting that smile on their face and we're like, we're facilitating memories that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. Like think about some of the best memories you've had in your life and chances are they were on vacation. And so like, we have, like, we've got a, like, we have to provide like the environment for people to, to be able to have the best vacation ever. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think the personalization and, and technology can help that. I think that not having to wait in lines, um, I mean, like, I mean, right. if I have to wait in another line while I'm on vacation, like just like, <laughs> if I have to pick up my phone and call somebody, yeah. right? Like I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm done. Like I'll spend 30 minutes online searching for something for, I'll pick up the phone and call somebody. Right. I mean, like, <laughs> and, I, and so I, I just, I think that, you know, um, yeah, I think the technology is, is, you know, can solve a lot of the problems that, that are, are in the hospitality space and, and hospitality has just been so slow to innovate. I mean, like it just, it just hasn't changed. I mean, the property management systems are running on on-prem servers from that were you know installed in 1996, you know, I mean, like, and, um, I actually went to a brand new hotel last year, brand new. And they were like, yeah, do you want to see our server room? And I'm like, <laughs> server like really like you have on-prem servers like it's, it's 2020 you know but that's like, that's that's still a thing so hmm so oh man that's such an interesting experience i can't i can't imagine how many other industries also operate that same way yeah i mean uh, i mean i don't know I, I don't know i don't know a whole lot about a, a lot of things anymore but uh or ever um but i will say that hospitality has been extremely slow to change and um and i and, and there's you know there's so many different systems now and you've got management companies and ownership companies and the corporate entity right. and then, i mean like there's just so many layers in, of complexity for them to change i mean like you know marriott and oracle are are married at you know you know like you know um marriott uses opera as their property management system which is owned by oracle like for for someone to for a startup to come and like change that would be, I mean like I, I just don't I mean like maybe Jeff Bezos has enough money to like build it right <laughs> I mean like but he may be the only one and like it's just not like it's just not gonna happen uh, I mean I don't see it happening anytime and, and I'm 36 years old I I don't think it'll happen before I retire. So you started with beaches mm -hmm. and then res or beaches and resorts and similar social media businesses then you moved towards food and beverages, then you move towards uh, golf courses. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the other things you've envisioned on your like roadmap or dream dream map of like industries you'd also like to revolutionize? <clears throat> so now we're doing um, convention services as well. One of, um, I, I saw it for the first time uh, this past weekend when I was at Lambeau. So they, like out in front of Lambeau Field, um, so Kohler Hotel, which is like, a, I mean, if you ever have an opportunity to go to Lambeau, stay at the Kohler Hotel. Um, it's a, it's an amazing place. Um, I mean, it, the bathroom and like the shower, everything is just, it's everything is just top notch. Um, okay. um, but they have a, a, an area called title town and at title town, they have, you know, it's right, right outside the stadium. And they're, they set up these remote bars for people to be able to buy a bucket of beer, seltzer, you know, like whatever water Coke. Um, and before they were using like a traditional point of sale system. That's like this big like computer thing. They had to go sit out there and then they had to power it. They had to run ethernet to it. Um, um, because none of the hospitality point of sale systems are, are wife are, are they're all Wi-Fi only. They're not, none of them are capable of running on 5g. They're all windows based. Like it's just, it's an old system. Right. Um, and, and they were, so talking to them before this last game, they're like, yeah, we need, like, if you could come down like two hours for the game, and help us get set up, that'd be really helpful. I'm like, great. And so I show up the next morning. I'm like, what can I do? She goes, well, we're already set up. And I was like, well, I'm, well, I'm here. What like? And she goes, 
Last week, it took us two hours to get all the point of sale systems like in place and the power run and like everything taped down. And, and now like we just have an iPad, <laughs> you know, and it's integrated with their property management system. So like hmm. every room charge goes back up, you know, to the hotel, every yeah. credit card, like, you know, they don't have to do any end to day reconciliation, nothing. I mean, it's, it's the equivalent of, of like what Square did or, or what Clover or Revel are doing in like the coffee shop space or what Toast has done, right. you know, in the restaurant space. But none of those none of those companies are integrated with with the property management systems, and I think that that's something that, that I mean that's something that we've spent a lot of time doing, right? I mean, integrating with different POSs, and then but most right. importantly, integrating with the property management systems to do real time guest lookup, real time guest charges, and you know, making accounting really love us because um, we've, if I've learned anything in the hospitality business, if if you piss off an accountant, um, you might as well just pack up your stuff and go home. <laughs> <laughs> So as a as a CEO, you a part of your role is the visionary role. We're trying to figure out like what is the potential for my company. Mm -hmm. How do you go about thinking about that? Like, what is your process for for coming up with the roadmap? Man, I mean, a lot of it's through my life experience of you know like traveling a lot and I see things and I'm like, man, we could solve that. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I like being on the road. Um, hmm. But also, you know, I used to be so busy. Um, with, with doing a lot of things that like, and, and not like me, not menial tasks, right. But like, just so busy, just with stuff. And I was in meetings and I was in, I was involved in this and I was involved in that. And it's like, no one could have a meeting unless I was there, you know? And, and I think that, um, just growing in my role as, as the CEO and, and, and growing in my role of how big the opportunity is that's in front of us, um, is really just taking a step back and taking time like literally scheduling time where like, I'm just thinking about our business. I'm thinking about hospitality and I'm thinking about, you know, hotels. Like, and I even go, like I go sit in hotel lobbies, um, like, you know, in the area that I'm in and just like sit around and kind of think about like the inefficiencies that I'm, that I'm either seeing or that I've experienced and, and like how our software could play into that. Um, and then, you know, we get a lot of feedback from our customers. Um, you know, hey, we're thinking about, I mean, that's how golf came about, right? One of our customers was like, mm. hey, we want to use your tablets on our golf course. And I was like, tell me more about that. And then they told me about how, you know, they don't have a 5G tablet. So they had a Wi-Fi only tablet and they would run it in offline mode. And then they'd have to go back to the pro shop and like connect it to the Wi-Fi and then everything would upload. But I mean, it was, it was just, a, it just wasn't a, um, it just wasn't, it didn't work well. So I started right. playing a lot more golf um, and, and, and really taking note of my experience. Um, and a lot of times people were either writing down my credit card number, taking a picture mm -hmm. of my credit card, take physically taking my card and saying, you can pick it up when you're done. And I'm like, what the heck? I mean, that's not, first of all, like this isn't, it's some, not secure. No, it's not secure at all. Like, this is, like it's not, it's not illegal, but it's not PCI compliant. And, right. and so then I was like, yeah, we should do like, we should totally do that. And, and the, the great part of that was their average transaction size on their beverage cart before we started working with them was $6.50, right? So that was their average transaction. So that was 2020, 2019, 2018. That was their average. 2021, we started in March with them. And they've run the same, same amount of golf, similar amount of golfers, but they've run more transactions and their average transaction size is over twenty dollars now, hmm. and it, and it's about triple. It, we've just made it so much easier for people to buy things on the golf course, and like transaction friction is a real thing. And you know how much money were they missing? I mean, how much money? You know, part of that is because they now have more things in their cart because now they have true inventory control and they have true. I mean, like there's a lot of other things that go into it, but now. Um, I mean, their their cart girls are getting tipped on every transaction because boom, everybody just taps twenty percent, and you know, like they don't mm. even, you know, they, they just don't even really think about it anymore. We're just so in tune with that, you know, and and like right. like now we're putting the twenty five percent in the middle because everybody just hits the middle button, um, and you know, our, you know, the, and our cart girls, our cart attendants are are just making 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 a lot more money. So now they're happier and they're getting around the course faster because they know every customer, you know, and, yeah. and so it's just there's a, it's kind of a you know. Uh, you know, snowball hmm. effect of just, and we took that data and put a case study around it. And then we signed Pinehurst, right. Which is obviously one of the you know best golf courses. I've never, I, so I say all this, I've never even been um, my, so my, listen to this, David, tell me if you think this is right. 
So my team goes, right? And they come home and, and, and I said, we had two, two guys from our executive team go and, and our implementation team. They come home, they've got Pinehurst hats, Pinehurst shirts, Pinehurst, <laughs> Pinehurst club covers for their golf clubs. You know, do, you think, do you think any of them thought to bring me anything? I got nothing. I got, <laughs> I got nothing. So now they're, all, now they're all at Polar, and I'm seeing pictures of them riding around with Ryder Cup, like Team USA stuff on. And I text them. I said, I, said, if I, don't, get, if I don't have at least a hat or a shirt, like I'm firing everybody. And we're, <laughs> we're starting all over. Um, but no, it's, so, um, but yeah, so we took it to Pinehurst. They, and, and now Pinehurst is like thinking about, well, you know, wow. where else can we use this? And they want to roll us out in other areas of the resort. And we're seeing that more and more, you know, when you talk about like how I think about the future, I think a lot of it's, a lot of it's just direct feedback from our customers thinking about mm. other places they've had issues with. I mean, like one of our customers here on the beach for football season, they put a bar on the beach, they put like this big inflatable TV up on the, on the beach and they show like football games and then people like get chairs and they can sit and watch whatever the game is. And, and so they were, they have this bar that they built and, and they have like a traditional point of sale terminal in it. And they started out, they put batteries in the bottom of it to power it like car batteries. And then it weighs like 800 pounds. So they're like, okay, well that's not really going to work on the beach. So then they, they, they got like a thousand foot extension cord, so they could plug it into the hotel and then run that all the way out to the beach. And then they're like, oh, man, we need Ethernet cable, too. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's just like just to be able to run a couple thousand dollars in transactions, you know, that night. And we're like, right. well, man, how much easier is this now that, like, you just need an iPad? Right. You know, like it's it's um, you know, it doesn't seem like like I don't feel like that, like what we've done there in terms of our food and beverage product is like anything crazy innovative. Right. I mean, like, I think that that toast and square and revel and clover and like all these, like some of them, I wouldn't consider startups anymore. But um, certainly at one point they, you know, they were startups. Yeah. Um, and I think they've done a really good job of revolutionizing the point of sale space. And we're just taking that and bringing that into hospitality. And when you when you have our mapping technology and you know where everyone's seated and you know their name, you have their payment information, you know, just makes the trend like takes all the transaction friction out of the equation. And I think right. that's why are we having a lot of success? Call it 10 years ago. Could you imagine being where you are today? Man, 10 years ago, I would have told you by the time I'm 36, I'd be retired, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> no. Um, you know, like, I think that I, I mean, you know, I mean, try to say this is like, and in, 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 because I do think I'm a pretty humble guy. I don't think that I'm, I'm not a, I don't know. I'm not, I, I mean, I certainly everyone has an ego, but I don't think that I have just some crazy ego where we're like, I pound my chest because I'm the CEO of a, of a successful <laughs> tech company. Right. That's not, that's not who I am. Um, but I think that, um, you know, there's always been a part of me that knew that the knew that I was going to do something different and do something special. Um, and, and like, and, and I haven't really done anything. Right. I mean, like I had an idea and, and like found people that would, that I could sell to go help me build the idea. Right. And, um, so, I mean, like, I mean, the answer is, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I, I think that I've always thought that I was different and that I could do something different and that I could build something really special. Um, you know, the fun part for me has been selling people on that. Right. And like convincing people to leave a 22 year career or, you know, yeah. like, you know, just do something that they never, like, like if you would ask Mike, our VP of product, if he would have ever left his job after being somewhere for 22 years, like, like, you know, he was going to die there. Right. I mean, like, and, and, and how we met and like, like all just kind of came together. And I'm like, like that to me is, that's the part that I guess I didn't expect. Like that's the surprising part to me. Um, and just being surrounded by people that, that I admire and, and that I look up to and, and, um, you know, I mean, Piotr, who was our very first engineer, you know, um, like you'll find, I think, I think this is a great story and, and, and just kind of tells you maybe a little bit about working at Beachy. He, he, he messaged me like a month ago and it was a Friday morning and he said, Hey David, can we, can we talk today? And like, I, I have little to no like one-on-one -on -one interaction with Piotr anymore. And so I thought that was kind of strange. And he's like, yeah, like the end of the day would be fine. And I'm like, um, no, I want to talk right now. Like if you're messaging me, like, let's talk. 
So then I'm texting Charles, who's his boss. And I'm like, Hey, is, have you talked to Piotr? Is he quitting? Like what's going on? Like I'm, I, I'm freaking out. He's our first engineer. He like, he knows like where everybody's buried. Like he knows everything. Like, like we have to do like, if we have to pay him more, pay him more. Like, I don't care. Like, let's make it happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but Piotr, Piotr, um, so we get on the phone and it's kind of dark outside. Um, and, yeah. uh, cause so he, he lives in Poland. So he's seven hours ahead of us. And so it's kind of dark outside where he is. And he said, David, I, you know, so I just want to let you know that I've been, I started looking around a few months ago. Um, and today I signed some papers and I just bought this piece of land and my wife and my family and I, we're going to build our dream house here. And like, it's because of you and your idea that we're able to do this. And like, That's so that cool. to me is like what being a CEO of a company is all about. Like is, is like, um, you know, one of our engineers, John just bought his first house. And like, that to me is like, that's it. Right. I mean, like to like, cause I, like, again, I haven't done anything. Right? Like I had an idea and I just convinced these people to come along for the ride. And then, and now they're able to do things um, like buy their first house or, you know, whatever that milestone is in their life. That's important to them. And, and I think that to me, like when I think about 10 years ago, like what I wanted and like, those are the, like, that's what I want. Like this is, this company is not about me. It's not about our mm -hmm. investors. It's about right. the people that, that, that work with me. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully all of them can, you know, share in the passion that, that I have for this business. So. Well, convincing people to join a company is definitely non-trivial. <laughs> yeah. How would, how would you convince and call it a young or young to entrepreneurship, like early, new to entrepreneurship, entrepreneur, to convince other people to join a company when they, a lot of people have been at their companies for call it five, 10, maybe even 20 plus years. I mean, it's, I think a lot of it comes down to passion. I think a lot of it comes down to vision. I think a lot of it comes down hmm. to, um, you know, I mean, you gotta be able to spell out where you want to be right as, as a business. Right. And, and then you gotta be able to deliver on that. Um, gotcha. and, and I think that, we've done a, I mean, you know, and, and it's not just me who's recruiting people. Right. I mean, like we, I mean, like uh, it's funny, you know, when we, when we hire a new job, I mean, chances are, or we, when we, when we put up a job requirement or um, an ad, um, typically we don't have to put up the ad because we say, we just tell our team, Hey, this is what we're looking for. Here's a job description. And they have someone in their network that they worked for in the past or worked with in the past. And like, this guy would be perfect. Um, that just happened. We hired hmm. a director of engineering, one of our engineers was like, "Hey, that used to, this guy used to be my boss. I think he'd be perfect to come work for Beachy, and you know, it, it worked. You know, hmm. it worked out really well. But I think that it just you. I think a lot of it um, comes down to passion, and 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 like I'm, I love this business, right? Like I've um, I've given up a lot for this business, and I will continue to give up a lot for this business. But my team knows that I will go to the ends of the earth." to make sure this thing goes right. Like we are not going mm. to like failure is not an option. Right. I mean, and, and ultimately we may end up going bankrupt and failing and, and like, you know, but like my team's going to know that I literally gave everything to make that happen. And I, and I think that just, you got to get people to buy in to that and just know that like mm. the dude they work for or the, or the woman that they work for is 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 got their back and is gonna and is gonna go to war to make sure that you know they're able to complete the mission and and you know i've had i mean during covid man i mean think about that david i mean we're our revenue overnight went to zero dollars zero no mm. one was paying anything right i mean march 17th right, right. they shut down beaches all over the country and and like we went to zero dollars i think we had we had like a 45 day runway of cash um, and like all of our investors are like, we, like, we just lost 40% of our stock portfolio because stock market crashed. We just, you know, and it's like all these things happen right. simultaneously. And it's like, well, I need $2 million and I need it by the end of next month. Um, because that's what, that's what we need to make. I think that's what we need to make it through this. And then, you know, going to our team, who's all freaking out, like, are they losing their jobs? Like, are we, can I make payroll? Are we going to be able to afford to pay them? And like sitting up, I sat everyone down. I was like, guys, you got to trust me. Like, we're going to be fine. Like I'm going to have to do some hard things and like, I'm not, I can't convince, I'm not going to be able to tell you that every single one of you is going to be here when this is all said and done, right? I can't, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to BS you. Like we, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> no one does. Um, but I can tell you, I'm going to fight like hell and make sure that we come out of it on the other side. And we did, I raised two, I raised $2 million in about 45 days. Um, 
And uh, so, you know, kept us, you know, we're still burning on that money. Uh, we still have that money right now. Um, and uh, we had to lay off one person and that was it. Um, and it was someone who was in sales and it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but you know, it was just the, it was just the reality of, of where we were at the time. So, um, yeah, and, and I think that that bought us, bought me and, and our team a lot of goodwill with our team, right? Like, like I think that right. employers or employees will look back at time when things suck, right? And go, all right, well, yeah, things sucked for us then. And, but David was there and, and our executive team was there. You know, our board members were there. Our investors were there. Everyone showed up. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that's, I think those are things that people will remember, um, you know, versus companies that were just laying people off left and right. Um, and, and, you know, with little to no, uh, just not even thinking like, all right, this division's gone. Like, see y'all, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and now that that's just not the, I mean, I would have, I mean, like I, I took no salary, right? Like you don't have to pay me anything. Like, I mean, it's not, I mean, where am I going to go? <laughs> you know, like, uh, right. and, and you know, whatever we need to do to get through this and, and, you know, um, you know, luckily we did we didn't have to make a deal with the devil, but and uh, we were able to get the money we needed, and and you know here we are, we're still here, and our business grew exponentially last year um, during COVID. Our business grew exponentially again this year, and our business is probably going to have the biggest um, percentage increase in revenue from 2021 uh, to 2022 than it has since we started. Nice. Well, this has been a great hour. Yeah. Uh, I've learned a lot from you. I just had a lot of fun. I hope you did yeah, too. Man. I just want to leave you with one uh, final opportunity, just in case any of our, our viewers are interested in following, following you along in your journey or following you along personally. What's the best way for them to do so? Yeah, so the only uh, social media um, that I do is on LinkedIn. So you can find me real easily on LinkedIn. My profile is public and, um, you know, I'm, I don't do Twitter. I don't, I don't have an Instagram um, uh, I, I, I won't follow you back on Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the only thing that's on Facebook, are, I think are pictures of my kids. I don't think I've posted since like 2008. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, follow me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty engaged, um, with my LinkedIn profile. Um, and, uh, you know, I probably have like 20, 20,000 people that I'm LinkedIn with and, uh, and, and I post quite a bit there. And, um, I think, hopefully interesting material for people to read um, that are in the, you know, thinking about hospitality. Sounds good. Well, thanks again for your time, David. Thank you, David. Really appreciate it.